Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. Today's topic is a groundbreaking missile system, revealed just a day before the making of this video. Russia's Oreshnik, a medium to intermediate range ballistic missile equipped with conventional multiple independently targetable submunitions. This weapon is potentially immune to all currently operational ballistic missile defense systems worldwide. The key innovation enabling the Oreshnik's design is the use of submunitions instead of traditional unitary warheads. This payload concept enhances both the weapon's operational flexibility and its economic feasibility, which is a crucial factor for such an advanced high-end system. Missiles of this complexity, which typically incorporate thrust vectoring, solid propellants, multi-stage configurations, and a post-boost vehicle are costly assets. The post-boost vehicle, basically a robotic system capable of altering its position and orientation in the vacuum of space, plays a vital role in deploying the payloads. In the Oreshnik's case, this means submunitions rather than unitary warhead re-entry vehicles. By employing a cluster of warheads, which disperse explosive force across multiple points instead of concentrating it on a single one, the Oreshnik achieves a balance of destructive effectiveness and cost efficiency. This design enables the creation of a high-end, but yet economically viable, conventional weapon system. Russia is among the few nations with the technological expertise and historical foundation necessary to develop such a high-tech system. During the 1980s, the Soviet Union created the Topol Intercontinental Ballistic Missile and pursued the advanced career miniature ICBM. While the Topol entered full-scale production and service, the Courier program was ultimately discontinued. This decision was driven by the Soviet Union's collapse, the end of the Cold War, and the reduced threat levels it resulted in. By the late 2000s and 2010s, however, Russia had rebuilt its technological base for strategic missile development. This led to progress on the Rubezh project, a compact, road-mobile ICBM that could also serve as an intermediate-range missile depending on its payload configuration. The Rubezh aimed to deliver a nuclear strike capability via a relative small mobile launcher reduced detection footprint. Despite its promise, the program was given lower priority and limited funding due to the robust state of Russia's existing tactical and strategic nuclear missile forces. The Oreshnik missile, which has not yet been publicly seen, is believed to be based on the Rubezh program, according to U.S. intelligence reports. These reports form the basis of this analysis, as useful information is rare at this point in time. The Oreshnik has four key defining characteristics. First, it is a long-range system with an estimated reach of 1,500 to 4,000 kilometers, depending on the payload configuration. This range ensures that the missile can be launched securely, with minimal risk of neutralization of its mobile launch platform. Second, its delivery system combines hypersonic impact speeds exceeding Mach 10 with up to 36 submunitions. The unpredictable motion and aerodynamic disturbances experienced by these submunitions during re-entry make interception by existing Western hit-to-kill endo-atmospheric ballistic missile defenses nearly impossible. Even if interception were feasible, the sheer volume of 36 individual targets would overwhelm and saturate defense systems, ensuring the missile's mission effectiveness. Whether the submunitions re-enter the atmosphere individually or are transported inside a re-entry vehicle to be dispersed at a specific altitude after passing through peak atmospheric aerothermal shock, the defensive challenge remains formidable. In such cases, at least six Mach 10 Plus re-entry vehicles would need to be intercepted, feasible, but very expensive. This further demonstrates the Oreshnik's practical ability to penetrate missile defense systems. The third notable feature of the Oreshnik is its reliance on a single guidance system. Unlike a system which would require multiple maneuverable re-entry vehicles with individual guidance and steering systems, the Oreshnik's post-boost vehicle deploys its submunitions along unguided precise ballistic trajectories while still in space. This design eliminates the need for complex, maneuverable payloads and additional guidance systems, significantly reducing production and operational costs. The post-boost vehicle, although sophisticated high-tech with its thruster attitude control system, simplifies guidance by placing six payload clusters or re-entry vehicles, each containing six submunitions, on pre-calculated trajectories. Finally, 
the Oreshnik boasts exceptional penetration capabilities against hardened objects. Its submunitions, impacting at Mach 10 or higher, deliver immense kinetic energy upon hitting the target. Despite their relatively small size, they can inflict devastating damage on buried or reinforced concrete installations. The missile is thought to employ a two-stage design with a post-boost vehicle mounted on top of it. A likely modular payload configuration would allow for mission flexibility. In yesterday's attack on Ukraine, six sets of six submunitions were reportedly deployed. This modular configuration can likely be adjusted based on mission requirements, enabling the use of fewer or greater numbers of submunitions depending on the range and objectives. Once launched from its compact mobile launcher, the Oreshnik reaches the vacuum of space, where its post-boost vehicle detaches. At this point, it is believed that the submunitions are rapidly deployed onto six separate trajectories, aimed at different targets within the same general region. The quick deployment of submunitions immediately following the boost phase serves a critical purpose. Avoiding interception by mid-course interceptors, such as the US Standard Missile 3. Once the post-boost vehicle completes this deployment, the Oreshnik system becomes practically impossible to intercept in a cost-efficient manner. The submunitions or re-entry vehicles continue on a likely lofted ballistic trajectory, traveling unguided and with no efficient means of interception toward their designated targets. A lofted trajectory is likely to be chosen to ensure a steep re-entry angle for the submunitions. This design consideration is crucial, because unguided submunitions are prone to significant dispersion, which could reduce their effectiveness as a conventional counterforce weapon. The steep re-entry angle, achieved at the expense of reduced range and payload, minimizes atmospheric flight time, allowing the submunitions to travel towards their targets more quickly, and therefore with greater accuracy. The shorter their exposure to atmospheric influences, the less distortion they experience, maintaining precision. Given modern advancements in inertial guidance systems, the Oreshnik's post-boost vehicle is likely capable of placing its unguided submunition payloads with remarkable precision. Although drift in the inertial sensors during the boost phase and post-boost vehicle operation introduces inaccuracies, it is reasonable to expect the post-boost vehicle to achieve a position precision of meters or tens of meters, placing the submunitions at optimal angles and velocities for their remaining flight and impact. The steep re-entry angle and minimal atmospheric flight time contribute to an estimated circular error probable CEP, of 30 to 100 meters for the Oreshnik's submunitions. When combined with the ability to deploy six sets of six, or potentially even more, submunitions, this level of precision provides sufficient firepower to effectively target tactical military assets, particularly large area targets. This capability allows a single Oreshnik to exploit its ability to strike up to six distinct targets. In summary, the Oreshnik is a relatively expensive missile system, likely costing several million dollars per unit. However, its unique combination of long-range capabilities, high penetration potential against existing missile defenses, and effectiveness in targeting hardened structures like airbase tarmacs, offers a compelling return on investment. The system's capacity to target six different objects in a single region also compensates for its high cost, while the sheer number of submunitions, up to 36 or more, can also be concentrated on a single target to achieve substantial destructive power when required. For Russia, the Oreshnik represents a revolutionary advancement. It provides the capability to target NATO air bases across Europe, potentially rendering them temporarily inoperable. A strategy similar to one pursued and to some extent operationally demonstrated by Iran's missile forces. This key operational capability sends a strong message to NATO and particularly European countries, undermining the strategic value of their air power in confrontations with Russia. The Oreshnik leverages the existing production infrastructure of Russia's strategic missile forces to create a tactical weapon system, allowing production volumes sufficient to pose a credible threat to NATO. This development is a direct consequence of the Trump administration's decision to withdraw from the INF Treaty in 2019, a move that will reshape the global missile landscape, likely in Russia's favor. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you, and 
Have a great day.